Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Hoshisaki Technical Training. My name is Lee McElfresh, and I'm here with Mr. Mike Sprayberry from our Technical Support Department. Today, we're going to be talking about electronic bin control sensors. Hey, Mike, tell me a little bit about the electronic bin control sensors that Hoshisaki uses on their ice makers. Okay, Lee. So the sensor I have in my hand now is the infrared sensor that we use on the modular J model flakers up until August 2023 when we switched over to the ultrasonic bin control. Let me start with how the infrared sensor works. Uh, so the infrared sensor, there's two LEDs on it. Uh, there's a green LED indicating that it has power and there's a yellow LED that indicates the ice level and approaching ice level. Uh, so the yellow LED, once the ice starts rising and gets close to the activation point, it starts flashing yellow. The activation point of the bin control is actually between 11 and 13 inches. And once it reaches that point, the yellow light goes solid and then it starts a shutdown process. The infrared bin control on a modular Flaker J model plugs up to the K6 connector on the control board. So the infrared bin control works in conjunction with the proximity switch is mounted on top of the chute in the modular flakers. Should the infrared fail, ice backs up into the chute, opens the switch, and the shutdown process starts. So when we transition from the infrared to the ultrasonic, on the modular flakers, they work a little bit differently, but they both still work in conjunction with the proximity switch on top of the ice chute. Where the infrared is, uses light to activate the bin control, the ultrasonic uses sound. Uh, one other thing to note, the shutoff points on the infrared are not adjustable. The shutoff points on the ultrasonic are adjustable using a dial on the control board. So the ultrasonic bin control and modular flakers plugs into the K10 board connector on the control board. And as we mentioned earlier, the depth of the ice can be set by using this dial. You'll need to consult your instruction manual or your service manual as far as what depth the ice needs to be set compared to what ice storage bin it's setting on. Hey Mike, tell me a little bit about the ultrasonic bin control sensors for a KM series ice maker. Surely, so what you have in your hand there is the K board that uses a driver board in conjunction with the ultrasonic bin control. Your ultrasonic bin control plug into the K103 connector. We went from this setup to the K plus board, which has the driver integrated in the board. The ultrasonic would plug into the K12 connector on this board. Uh, remember to consult your instruction manual or your service manual as to where to set the dial for the height of the ice, depending upon what ice storage bin you're using. Hey Mike, thanks for that, some good information. So tell me how I'm gonna diagnose a faulty bin control sensor. Surely, so on the infrared sensor that was used on the modular flakers, uh, you should always have a green light on the top of the sensor as long as it's powered up. If you do not have a green light, you need to check the voltage right here on the K6 connector on the control board. If you do not have voltage here, you've got a bad board. If you have voltage at the board, but do not have a green light on the sensor, you've got a bad sensor. So one of the easiest diagnostics to do on the infrared is to wipe the lens off to make sure it's not clattered over a scale or make sure there's nothing blocking the lens. So the next thing you want to do is point the infrared out in midair and the unit still doesn't come on, chances are you have a bad sensor. All right, so checking the ultrasonic is pretty much the same way as the infrared. You want to remove the sensor from the unit, wipe the face off, uh, hang it out in midair. If the unit still does not start up, you may have a bad sensor or you may want to check the voltage at the K10 connector. You will want to consult the service manual for the proper voltage coming out of the connector. So we know both the infrared and the ultrasonic work in conjunction with the proximity switch on the top of the chute. So to test the proximity switch, it's sometimes referred to as bin control two in your manual. You want to connect the leads to your proximity switch to the leads of your meter, set your meter to continuity, turn it on. You hear a tone, that means it's closed. So what you want to do is reach inside, 
push the lever, it should open, release the lever, it should close. You wanna cycle that about 10 times. So if you do that 10 times, one out of those 10 times, if it fails to close when you release the lever, or if it fails to open when you push in on the lever, you'll wanna replace the proximity switch. So with the ultrasonic being controlled on a KM, you'd wanna test it basically the same way as you would a flaker. You will remove the sensor, uh, wipe the face off, uh, hold it up to midair. If the unit does not start, uh, you may have a bad sensor, but you also wanna make sure that you check the voltage coming from the connector where the bin control connects to, to the board on either the driver board with the K board or the K plus board connector where the bin control attaches to. So Mike, I've tested everything you've told me to do, but I still believe that my sensor is good. What else could be wrong? Well, you could have a bad control board or the bad driver board. So you need to take and measure voltage going from your board to your driver board, which the voltage rating is in your service manual. You'll want to look at it. Uh, so if it's determined that the driver board is bad, you have two options. You can just replace the driver board or you can replace the driver board and the K board with the K plus board. Thank you everybody for joining us today for Hoshisaki's technical training. If you have any more questions, you can reach us at the technical support department.